So Rich, I know we're in Paradise Valley, but where are we specifically? Well, this is the Mika or Mica Hotel. Uh, it was built around the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an interesting building. It's kind of the signature building for Paradise Valley. It's very scenic. Uh, yeah, you see it in a lot of photographs. Uh, it's been used in some advertisements, things like that. Um, What's interesting about it is it's a good example, as you can see from the stone that we're standing on, that uh, this valley, uh, part of what makes this such an interesting area is uh, there, a lot of Italians were immigrants that moved in here uh, starting in the 1860s. And when they arrived, they were, they were from the Piedmont area of Italy, and they were stonecutters uh, by trade. And so they did a lot of this work that you see, the foundations here made out of locally quarried granite. This building itself has is, is got a, a, this granite foundation, but then it's actually adobe. There was an adobe factory here in Paradise Valley. Wow. And um, they, so they made, and a lot of the buildings that you see around town will be made out of adobe for and that so reason. The, the wood isn't actually the main structure? No, it's just a facade that was built. Um, they kind of built it in pieces. Uh, there was an adobe building, then they expanded it, and uh, it had a saloon and a, a lot of other things. I think there was even a bakery in the basement. I, but the, uh, the stone cutters did some marvelous work. You can even see on something simple, like over here, uh, you've got these stone walls that were built for irrigation and, and flood control purposes, and they're, they're beautiful. Just the work, uh, the craftsmanship that went into it. We can take a look at that I'd over love here. To see it. They put a lot of work into the infrastructure of this community. Oh yeah, and that's what makes it interesting is, uh, I mean, these most Nevada towns made out of wood, the wood decays and the town kind of disappears. There's so much stonework here and they used it for a whole variety of buildings. Um, there's barns that were made out of stone, little little cellars that were made out of stone. And of course, we'll see later some of the more substantial buildings like the church. So as you can see, you look down, this is some pretty substantial stonework, pretty amazing, really. And it uh, holds up done. extremely well yeah. over time. Oh yeah, I mean, there's no flood that's gonna take this out. Mm. So um, it, it's just, and this is a simple thing. I mean, this is nothing major. This yeah. is just a wall, a retaining wall, so. It's beautiful though. Yeah. You know, I noticed, when we were coming into town, just mm -hmm. looking around, you mentioned you know the construction styles. Mm -hmm. A lot of unique buildings, all the way through. You know, there's no set style of oh, right. of construction. Sometimes you just see the same design all across. Right, it's all Victorian Everything's different or something. Here. It yeah. looks like everybody had a different idea. Yeah, and I, I don't know if that's just the, each individual stone cutter had his own vision for how they were gonna gonna do things, but um, I, I think it's just the nature of, of um, how the buildings developed. You know, each one had his own personality. Um, and uh, some of them, I think, you, as we can see as we go, um, really do look rather unique. <laughs> cool. So. The first Eastern explorer to come through here is believed to be Peter Skin Ogden of the Hudson Bay Company in 1828. He was looking for beaver and other trapping opportunities at that time. All these additions to the valley began to impose on the native people living here, and some of them fought back. The United States Army came to Paradise and built Camp Winfield Scott in order to deal with the raids. The Army's presence continued for six years until the residents were well established. Churches, a schoolhouse, and saloons soon joined the ranches and farms, and the valley settled into the close-knit community that has essentially continued until today. What a cute spot. I know. Up here, this is the St. Alphonsius Catholic Church. Uh, it was built in 1904, 1905 in that it's area. Fantastic. It's yeah. hard to believe it's that old. I mean, it's so oh, old. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, and it's also a really good example of the, of the real quality stone cutting that was done here by these folks that came over from Piedmont, Italy. Um, you can see from some of the designs uh, in the way the bell tower in the back, uh, the arches in the front here. The three windows across the bottom, the stained glass, of course, um, and it's just a, it's a real beautiful building. This was one of the real premier buildings that a lot of work was put into, a lot of pride and love in, in constructing it. So it shows it. It's a beautiful example of that uh, that that quality stonework that you talked about. Um, and, uh, interestingly enough, another place uh, you don't normally think about, but where we might want to go to see some of that stonework is the cemetery, which is at the other end of town. All right then. So, okay. Well, this is the Paradise Valley Cemetery. As you can tell, it's definitely still maintained, so it's not a ghost town cemetery. No, no, it was, uh, and, and it, actually it's quite clean. Uh, you know, they, they do a good job of 
keeping the weeds out, yeah, et cetera. It looks great. Um, why we're here is that this is really one of the, uh, another one of the examples of the stone cutting work that was done here in Paradise Valley. And there's some just beautiful headstones that have been carved by local craftsmen that and you can see just here. Just seeing some of the names on the stones, it reminds me that we've talked a lot about the Italian people coming in and doing this great work, but they weren't the only people here. Oh, exactly. I mean, there were a lot of Basques that came, Spanish Basques primarily. Uh, you had Chinese. Uh, there was a Chinese population in Paradise Valley. Um, and uh, so you, you had a number of different ethnic groups. I mentioned German before. A lot of the farms were owned by German uh, farmers uh, and ranchers out in this area. Beautiful cherub here, just some of the work and on some of the Look others. Look at the detail on this. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, We've seen how incredible their workmanship was, but this really gives you a sense of their artistry. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a, just a... It's beautiful. It's art. Oh. And as we go uh, kind of over towards the trees here, we get into the older section, and so you can see some of the graves are a little bit older. Um, the, the folks died uh, right at the early part of the 20th century or the turn of the century. It's really um, incredible to think this it was all carved by hand. Yeah. Stones. But you know, some of these are pretty old, uh, as you can see. Um, Here's died at Paradise Val Paradise, Nevada, 1879. 79, yeah. You know, so. and what I like about some of these old stones is the the amount that they write. Oh, I know. There's so much information that that I don't think is very common anymore these days. No, but you learn something about the person. Yeah, you really you know, when do. you're reading this, it's like, oh, all right, they're from Missouri. And, uh, you know, it's not just the day they were born, the day yeah. they died. Right. Come in here. Name. We're strangers. So. We read that. We know something about that person. They become real to us. I know people who are afraid of cemeteries, but You can learn a lot, a lot about the history of a town. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, definitely. And a I, lot to be I, said. I think this is actually a celebration of a community when you come to you know, a cemetery. It's where you really get a sense of the people that that founded the community and, and made it nice, happen. That's a nice way to put it.